Hi all. In my today's video cast, I will talk about uh, clustering and load uh, and uh, load balancing of Tomcat servers. Uh, in, in, in my previous uh, video, I have uh, demonstrated how do we achieve load balancing uh, with uh, Apache and Tomcat servers. Uh, in this video, I'll talk about clustering. How do how do uh, we have we, we can set up the clustering of Tomcat servers and uh, we can achieve high availability of sessions through all the available uh, Tomcat servers in my cluster. So why, first of all, why do we need such concept of uh, uh, high availability of sessions? Uh, so in a load balancing environment, just uh, think of a scenario when a uh, user is having a, a session, he's, he's going through a session and uh, the hosting server, the request hosting server is down. That means, uh, say example, we have uh, a Tomcat A, Tomcat B, and the currently Tomcat A is serving the re request, and the session is maintained by Tomcat A. Now, the moment uh, Tomcat A goes down, uh, Apache will forward the request to Tomcat B. But what about the session data? It will be lost. To eliminate that, we have the we have we have brought up the concept of high availability of sessions, and that can be achieved through. A, uh, by setting up a cluster of uh, Tomcat servers. So, clustering is pretty easy in Tomcat servers. Uh, <coughs> sorry. By default, the clustering will be disabled uh, in, your, in, in, in the Tomcat uh, session directory. Uh, so, we have to enable that. Um, <coughs> enabling cluster is very pretty easy. Uh, in, in the server.xml of uh, Tomcat's configuration directory, uh, there will be a attribute called cluster. So we have that will be com uh, commented uh, by default. We have to uncomment that, and additionally we have to add some parameters. Uh, what are all parameters? I will show you that. I have already set up to. Uh, I have I have already configured my existing uh, Tomcat instances with respect to the cluster configurations. I will just show you that what what are, what all configurations we need. So that our Tomcat server will be part of a cluster. So, as I told you, we have to uncomment the cluster configuration, cluster information in my server.xml file. So this server.xml resides in the configuration directory of Tomcat installation, uh, installation path. Now, um, as I told you, we need some other parameters. Um, so I will show you, I will just tell you what and all parameters we need. Uh, so this is the this is what is a complete cluster configuration of a single Tomcat instance or single Tomcat server. So the internal attributes are a manager class uh, through which the high availability of session will be maintained. So it's a predefined class. So uh, that, that has to be given over here. Then the channel. Channel is nothing but the way uh, the Tomcat server will communicate to each other in a clustered environment. So if I have three or four Tomcat servers, uh, they will share the session data among them so that the session will not be lost uh, in any particular time. So for that reason, they need a few entries over here. First is the membership, which is more important. Um, the membership class is given by a multi-class service class. Then the address is a valid IP address, uh, which can be accessible by each Tomcat instance. Uh, so that the Tomcat servers can reside at any geographical locations, but these tom those Tomcat servers should act should have access to this IP. Uh, then the port number. So uh, the Tomcat server will communicate uh, via this address and the port number. So this is more important. Then next entry is sender, sender and receiver. So these are the two parameters where uh, they will uh, share the session data uh, among themselves. So this is what a typical uh, cluster configuration will look like. So this configuration has to put in each ser each Tomcat's server.xml file. So all the Tomcat uh, instances which, which will be part of our cluster should have this server, server uh, sorry uh, should have this entry in the server.xml file. Now I have already um, configured this in my two clusters. My one cluster is C1 and another cluster is C2. So I have already configured that. I have already configured. Uh, my Apache load balancer with uh, uh, my servers, so which I have demonstrated in my previous video. Now we'll see that how do we achieve such high availability in a normal J2E web application. So, uh, 
so uh, i am continuing with my same um, cluster the web application uh, where i have the index of jsp first of all i am checking whether there is a session value or not if it is not uh, uh, i am giving an option to store the value in the store of jsp i am just checking um, if the parameter whatever user has entered is not uh, empty then i am setting into the my session so the value is session and uh, the value name called as value so this is not, not nothing but we are setting something in my session and we will verify uh, how the session will be uh, how the session will be replicated to different uh, clusters uh, one more thing one most important thing we have to do is uh, whenever we want to make such kind of uh, functionality or sorry uh, when, whenever we want to achieve such kind of functionality in the web.xml we have to add an entry called distributable it doesn't have any parameter just you add an um, attribute called distributable so what it does so the template server will identify that uh, this application session data can be distributed among all the all other template servers available in my cluster so we'll just verify after deploying we will uh, deploy this application in each of the template servers and we'll run them so i have already deployed this application in my template server i'll just access them directly so as you can see my url um, i am accessing through apache i don't i, I didn't access them through my template servers uh, so this is the default page over here now there is nothing in the session so i have already started my <coughs> clusters or template servers c1 and c2 now let's store some value say just uh, demo now let's just store so currently you can see i have put some logs over here so uh, from the log we can see that we can know that currently uh, the c1 instance or c1 cluster or c1 tomcat server is uh, maintaining my request or serving my request so uh, we can see the session value is cluster demo and which is served by my cluster c1 now let's Stop the server. So C1 server is down, and I, when I refresh is, I should see my cluster demo is still there. Though the C2 instance will uh, will serve my request, as by Apache's load balancing concept, if one server is down, it will forward the request to the next available server. So in my case, it's C2. But what will happen to uh, my session value? Let's check whether it's returns or not. We'll just refresh the page. you can still see this cluster demo the whatever session value we have set in uh, when the request is being served by the first cluster is still available that means whatever session uh, the c1 instance has created it has been transferred to c2 let's verify it again let's say cluster demo 2 now by that time i'll just start my uh, cluster 1 so started now let's store and as you as we know the c2 uh, tomcat server is serving my request uh, even if the, we can see the logs also here and now go to main page so now the session value is demo 2 now let's bounce or uh, stop uh, c2 and refresh so the best thing is still we have this cluster demo like my session is still available and is served in uh, through c1 now so this is a basic example of uh, clustering with tomcat and high availability of sessions thank you